So this will be a brief video on family systems approaches. Uh, most of it will be family systems in general and the importance of considering the, the individual client in context of the family. Um, and then a little bit extra with regard to Bowenian family therapy. Um, so, you know, I've done a lot of work with youth, uh, specifically in residential treatment, and the same is true in outpatient, um, that you know, for the first few months in residential treatment, we would see youth really grow with regard to emotion regulation um, and some of the behaviors that they were demonstrating in the initial stages of treatment and before treatment really start to get better and experience a ton of growth. Um, and then the youth would discharge um, and go back to the same family system. Um, and a lot of those problematic behaviors that were present before uh, come back um, due to interactions within the family. Um, so family systems perspectives um, attempt to conceptualize and, and assert that the individual is best understood um, in the context of the entire family. Um, without doing that, inevitably, you lose pieces of the individual, um, right? Because that is a, it's the family system is an interactional unit, um, right, where um, all these variables, all these people in this system are interconnected, right? And they operate at a specific equilibrium and oftentimes our, our behaviors within our family are very predictable. The transactions are, if I say one thing, then another member of my family will respond a particular way. Um, so if we change one variable within that system, um, the entire system will then reorganize to a different state at which it will operate, right? So for example, if I um, am not talking to my sibling A, right, um, that doesn't mean that, that my relationship um, with my sibling doesn't affect my relationship with my parents, right? Because we're all interconnected. The stress of one member uh, inevitably to some extent affects the stress of all members. So in family systems approaches, um, we attempt to help alter uh, some of those variables within that system. And a nonlinear dynamical systems approach um, that would be focusing on control parameters, right? Identifying the most important factors um, within that uh, system um, that are open to outside intervention. Um, and then if we can change those, the entire system will then reorganize. Uh, the issue can be sometimes that we do all this treatment and then send the individual um, back into the system um, and the individual returns to previous behavior, regresses to previous behavior. Um, and that just, you know, is evidence that that variable, the individual who we were working with, uh, might not have been really the control parameter that we were looking for. And again, that is a reference of, of chaos theory and, and dynamic systems theory um, you know it's it's a possible it's possible to work from a systems perspective with the individual um, to a certain extent to be able to get the individual I guess transcend some of the interactions within the family uh, maybe be a little bit more meta about the interactions <clears throat> symptoms in a family systems approach um, are theoretically an expression of dysfunction within a family. And I guess you kind of have to consider that in context, um, that not all uh, symptoms that we're going to see are going to be a resultant of the family interactions, that some of them might be more biological, genetic, and organic in nature. Um, but uh, for the most part, we try to conceptualize behaviors within the contents within the context of that family um, and see how that behavior um, is motivated and seeks to serve a purpose within that family and then provide any alterations that we're able to. Um, so multi-generational family therapy was developed by Murray Bowen. Um, and again, this references the family as an emotional unit. Um, so any unresolved emotional reactivity uh, must be addressed in order to help the family grow uh, and people to develop uh, in their individuality. Um, one of the key concepts within this approach is differentiation of self, right? That psychological separation from others, right? My, uh, my ability to um, develop my own self, right? And not be overly enmeshed uh, with other individuals within my family, which, uh, can, which is, is healthy, right? Um, to be my own person um, and still be able to make that contact with other people. Um, another key concept is triangulation, right? 
if a couple um, is having a difficult time dealing with things, then they invite another individual or a third party into that re relationship and triangulate that individual or, or third party into the relationship um, to manage some of the stress, right? That would be that couple that is unable to function alone, but when a friend's present or they buy a puppy or have a kid, um, that it gives them a focus um, that's not each other um, and some of the dysfunction that exists. Um, and the last concept that we'll talk about um, is emotional cutoff, um, that totally distancing self um, from one family, uh, uh, from the entire family um, in general. Um, you know, <clears throat> even, you know, I don't practice family therapy, but I frequently uh, do consultation with family, especially if I'm working with youth, um, right, to help the parents and connect with the parents with the youth present in the room to talk about some of the things that are going on in the house and how we can do things like alter um, the communication that exists um, and how consequences are applied, um, right, and some of those meta messages um, that Virginia Satir talks about, right, that I could say something to you, but that those paraverbals, the tone or whatever it might be how I say it, sends a totally different message um, to you about how I feel about you uh, that might be contradictory to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Um, <clears throat> families are diverse, um, and if a clinician uh, isn't really a listening um, and paying attention to what's going on, um, that can cause problems, right? Because what's normal in my culture with family and what's healthy uh, might not be particularly normal and healthy um, within another culture, um, right? Specifically talking if, you know, the United States tends to be more uh, a, a higher value on individuation, um, where collectivist culture is not necessarily the same, right? So that differentiation occurs of the person, but it's going to look different in other cultures, um, right? And it's important to be able to keep that in mind. Um, so this isn't meant to be a blaming approach, um, right? That it's just the family isn't blamed and the individual isn't blamed. Um, but it's viewed as a system that operates uh, at a certain equilibrium. And what we want to do um, is change or intervene on specific variables in an attempt to alter that. Um, it can be a very empowering process for families to take an honest look at their communication. Um, that allows them to make changes with regard to how they interact with each other uh, with a clinician present, um, you know, and providing um, some facilitative consultation and work with the family. Um, you know, we don't want to be so systems oriented that we forget the um, individual and some of the problems of the individual, um, right? That's why I'm a fan um, of something we really haven't talked about, uh, chaos theory and, and dynamic systems theory, um, which really talks about the scalable nature of the concepts, uh, right, of understanding the internal, mental, and emotional system of the individual, which is connected to the external system of the people um, around the individual. So it's important to have a, a you know, a good perspective um, and consider the effects of the broader system while maintaining um, the individuality of the client uh, to offer really holistic and proper treatment.